Bye. Hi. It's, it's, it's loading now. No, we're going to be okay. going on. I just thought I'd better just go out and come back in. Okay, so um, part two, part. Okay, it's gonna go live. So we're we'll start recording, I think, right now. Okay. <laughs> this is so much fun. Yay, Zoom, yay. Con, sure? thank you. <laughs> We, I don't know about you guys, but it has been a crazy month and in good and bad yes. and um, just feeling like, what was the word, discombobulated, like just like out of sorts. And so I just want to pray quick. Father God, I thank you that you are God. I thank you who you are. I thank you for tonight. I thank you, God that you brought Connie to share her beautiful story of, of pain and overcoming God and still journeying through. Thank you for her. Thank you, God, for where you brought me through. I pray we can just lay down whatever is um, weighing us down. Uh, God, just re release it to you in Jesus' name. And I just lift up the Heart to Heart Hub community. God, you know what everyone's going through with coming back to school and all these things. So thank you, God for the plans you have for all of us that you want to impact us with your truth, your message, God, and testimony. We just thank you in your precious name, Jesus. And we lift our spirits to you. We hear from Holy Spirit in your precious name. Amen. Peace. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I was painting last night, Connie. I was painting um, a picture. And I'm not a painter. And my um, sister is a painter and my other sister was doing really well. And I wrote hope in black and it, it was not looking good. And I'm like, this is hopeless. And I just start crying and it wasn't even about the picture. And so it's like, you know, how many times do we have something happen that just throws us off and we have to right. remind it. So I paint, I started dabbing with yellow paint Dabbing it all, it's all an orange background, which I don't even like orange. My husband says it's because of Pedro's coloring. Um, but here I am now, hope in yellow. So it's hanging on my wall, as ugly as <laughs> get up, but it says hope. <laughs> so that's what I bring tonight is God's hope. So we had a, a, a longer intro because we had to wait to get on here. But I want to make sure that we bring your story, you know, together with being in peace so thank you father god that sometimes when we have this backlash we know it's even more important to share <laughs> so thank you connie for your patience let me introduce connie guys connie alvira was born and raised in oregon no matter how many years go by she feels that she's still in her 30s she just loves to play and create she grew up in a christian home that was very broken sadly her father was controlling and violent as she grew up she spent time in the military. That should be interesting to hear about. She experienced an abusive first marriage, then a second abusive marriage with an affair, then a third marriage where he had an affair, and then a child. Wow, Connie. Through her lifetime, she's had struggles that forced her to stand up and confront others for justice, even today. She is a woman of truth and honor, an advocate for those who can't speak for themselves and for animals who can't speak for themselves. <laughs> Connie is a mother of two grown children who also have experienced deep abuse and rejection. She is a proud grandma to seven grandchildren. Being a single mother for many years, Connie is an inspiration. Various opportunities and businesses that she started as an entrepreneur. She now runs an LLC partnership publishing business, marketing a book series with her son and another young man. This business was created with like-minded Christians. She also has a second business with over 500 people involved, creating full cast audiobooks with music and sound effects. Connie is first a passionate believer who walks in faith, trying to live out the word God gave her that she is his loving ambassador to be poured out like a drink offering to the Holy Spirit to the lost and wounded world, and that she is his victorious princess. And she's working on feeling okay with that VP position. And yes, we just say, go, Connie, go. Like I, when I first met you, Connie, um, I love your voice. And your brother has that same voice. I've, I've met her brother on an online Zoom check, and you have this low, like, radio voice. And I found out she's done 
um, that type of thing too. But Connie, I love your heart. And you know, you're one to look at the here and now and deal with it, even though you have so much in your story, in your past. So I just want to honor you in that because I've seen you like help others, be gracious to others, confront things that need to be, you know, confronted just like today. <laughs> you had to help a dog that someone was storing chocolate to poison. Like, so like, thank you for being an advocate for others. Like, it's like Esther, you know, she stood up for her nation and was yeah. an advocate for them. So I'm excited to walk through um, some of the questions I, I have tonight and to hear, you know, what God has done in your life, Connie. So now I have a question. You've grown up in, yep. grew up in, um, sorry, right? My hair is just like all it's over the place. Side. It's got to, it's got to go the other way. Yeah. Um, you grew up in Oregon and you lived your life there. You must love it there. I love the Northwest. Uh, if I have to be away from it too long, it, it's like soul sucking. I just really love home. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Very many people live in the same province or state for so many years. So I was thinking she must really love it. You love the scenery and. Yes. Now, you know, the Air Force kind of took me out to Texas first yeah. and then to California and then to Florida. So I spent a lot of time in those different sunshine states and everybody's like, oh, I miss the sun. It's like, please give me Oregon. <laughs> I, like, I, I like all the seasons. I like the whitewater rafting and the hiking and, and the the beauty of the Columbia Gorge is so amazing and I'm just like you don't even know what you're missing because you live in palm trees all the time I like to visit them yeah. I like to visit see beautiful gorgeous places um I have friends from the island of Saipan it's 70 degrees year round wow. except for, except for when they have a typhoon which is basically a hurricane and um yeah, she's always trying to convince me to go there. And I'm like, yeah, but it's just a few miles long and a few miles wide. And it's always the same. I, oh, yep. I could visit. I could visit. But Are you close to the mountains then? In Oregon? Yes, Mount Hood is, is like an hour up the road. I'm trying to find our life to share it to the other group because I haven't and I can't find it. Christine, could you look on my Heart to Heart Hub page and see if it's there? It's just not showing up. I'm not sure where I'm live, guys. <gasps> Maybe I'm in this, the Heart to Heart group, uh -huh. Sorry, oh. Connie. We're, we're just we're not showing supposed up. supposed to be live. Right in? It says we're live. Yeah, it says live. So I just want to make sure that I have it live on the right um, page. Just a second. Oh, I should mute maybe. Eh? Yeah, I'm just gonna mute in case it. So while you're muting and working, I will say that maybe I confused you when you said I've done some radio. The only one time I did radio and TV was when a guy who was a radio person took me on to talk about the book and and to, and then I was taken over and, and put on TV as well so I could talk about the book in the same occasion. Not my thing to be on the live, but I, I've got to go that direction because our whole business is, is audio now and, and we're really going to need me to not be uncomfortable to share lives, audio or video. So I can't hear you though. <laughs> I, I agree. I don't even know where it's showing, guys. So, so can someone help me look for it? Um, if you if you can, that would be awesome because I I don't know where I posted it. It should be in heart to heart, the page. And it usually pops up down at the bottom of the screen. Um, so it's not making sense where we are. 
<laughs> I've never had this happen, Connie. I'm so it's all right. I am extremely um, relaxed because seeing that it's not perfect for you gives me so much encouragement for when I have to go and do my first challenge. Yeah, I have never had it be like this, and I'm I'm not sure where we are. Well, now at least everything's showing up at the bottom and before participants, questions, chat, and all that wasn't even showing up. So it is now. Oh, it is? What page are you on? I'm on Zoom. Oh, okay. So, okay, I'm gonna try. I don't know where I'm live, so I'm gonna start again. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna start again. <laughs> Because I don't know where it went. Okay. Okay. We'll start over. I'd rather have it more smooth with your story, you know, then. So, do you want me to leave? Nope. No. Okay. It's just something with where it went live. It's a mystery. Well, whoever <laughs> those other participants are, thank you the for being patient. Too. Can you see it? Which Chris? Uh, Palachuk, the one who just was on Tuesday night. All right. So. Oh, hi. Okay. Okay, this should, this should do it. It says webinars now streaming live on Facebook. Yeah, it says it's live now. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. Okay, guys. I'm uh, learning something new tonight. Um, okay, watch party to. Okay. All right. Well, tonight, guys, we're starting a little bit later, but I'm going to start again so that. Um, we give Connie the attention and time she needs. So I don't know where I went live before, but whatever. So welcome, Connie. I'm just going to bring up um, your uh, your um, paper about you. Um, Connie, uh, just a second. I'm going back to the most fresh one because I did a Okay. Thank you, Father God, for tonight. <laughs> and thank you for your peace and your hope and your joy that it's September 17th, 2020, halfway through the month. And God, we are looking forward to some amazing things. And thank you guys for joining in and being patient. I was live somewhere in the abyss, so I don't know where it was, but here we are. So tonight we have Connie Alvera. Uh, Connie was born and raised in Oregon. No matter how many years goes by, she feels as if she's still in her 30s because she loves to create um, beautiful things with words and pictures and uh, audio, and we'll talk about that later. She grew up in a Christian home that was very broken. Sadly, her father was controlling and violent. As she grew up, she spent time in the military. She experienced an abusive first marriage, then a second abusive marriage with an affair, then a third marriage where he had an affair and then a child. Through her lifetime, she's had struggles that forced her to stand up and confront others for justice. She is a woman of truth and honor, an advocate for those who can't speak for themselves. Connie's a mother of two grown children who also have experienced deep abuse and rejection. She's a proud grandma to seven grandchildren. Being a single mother for many years, Connie is an inspiration. Various opportunities and businesses that she started as an entrepreneur. She now runs an LLC partnership publishing business, marketing a book series with her son and another young man. This business was created with like-minded Christians. She also has a second business with over 500 people involved, creating full cast audiobooks with music and sound effects. Connie is first a passionate believer who walks in faith, trying to live out the word God gave her, that she is his loving ambassador. I love that word. To be poured out like a drink offering through the Holy Spirit to the lost and wounded world. And that she is his victorious princess, working on feeling okay with that VP physician. Yes, I know how that goes. Change of mindset, right? So I think we're on, we're on uh, both Facebook page and group. So thank you guys for your patience. 
So Connie, I asked you this earlier, but I'll ask you again. You grew up in Oregon and lived there all these years, except for when you're in the military. Um, you uh, here and there, God had me somewhere else for a very, just different reasons. When my sister-in-law was passing away, I ended up, well, she didn't pass away until 2018, but they, they diagnosed her right after I arrived to sell our book on a tour um, when it was just in print. She was diagnosed like immediately with cancer and it was so aggressive and so bad. Um, and it was a horrible treatment, way beyond anything you can imagine. And um, she took it because her son was about to have his first child. Her daughter was about to graduate. Um, just uh, her whole, her other son was going to get married. There were just so many little things that would have, she just didn't want them to not have her for. Mm -hmm. So she took the treatment and she lived three years, but it was, it was quite hellish for her. Wow. And I stayed, I stayed for about eight months. And the first four was to wow. just really take care of around the clock, you know, care because she had to have support. So, wow, that's amazing. Like, not many people yeah. will be able to go do that, Connie. Like, that's a gift in mm -hmm. itself is to be able to. Yes. I, I, I knew it was like, okay, all right, God, just like being here right now. It's yeah. okay, God. <laughs> I can breathe. I can breathe. Right. Like it's, it's a journey, but what a, what a gift to give to somebody like, and you just been spending how many months at your daughter's helping with your grandchildren. Yeah. Like, and Oh, it's it, no matter that there is distress when you have three grandchildren it, cooped up in a house, right. With COVID and, and then, you know, even the beaches are closed and we live like a few blocks and it's like, no, they've only been able just recently to go to the park one time. And, and so, you know, it's, they're finally opening up a little, but then they went to the Yucatan because right now that's where they are because their other grandmother passed away, their dad's wow. home. Wow. So, yeah. Wow, that's sad. Wow, I'm sorry to hear that. Wow, it's yeah. Going on in it is. Like not even just COVID, but so many other things. It's like incredible. She was in her 80s. So, you know, um, honestly, it was kindness for her to be able to go for her sake because she spent the last two years barely surviving. And, and um, my daughter and, and son-in-law sent money so that she could have daily care, which changed and they thought she was going to pass away a year ago. And she stayed alive for this year and he went back in May and then because she was really getting sick and, and then he um, got her some more help and came home and then they said, no, no, come back. So I've just been down here for the summer and it's actually in comparison to Portland, kind of safe in Tijuana on the beach area anyway. So... <laughs> My son was going to book a house there last week, and then he started reading about it, and he's like, I don't know if that's a safe place. What? It, you, you kind of... Oh, my son was going to book a place. It, you, you, uh... Okay. You hear me now? He, he's probably... Okay. He's probably safe to come here. Yeah, but he wasn't sure, so he was like, San Diego it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very safe in San Diego. Yeah. The, uh, there, uh, it's not like Portland where everybody's burning the city down. Although there was fires there, but it wasn't, it was just wildfires. So wow. I shouldn't say just, they have fires in California all the time. It's very sad. Yeah, I know when I was in California, it was, it was constant like that. So yeah, I think when I shared the thing to heart to heart hub pay, um, group, I shared it from heart to heart rather than me. And so it's not showing up in there, but I, I can't figure it out guys. It's like complicated. So I'm sorry, it's gonna be on the page and I'll share it later. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not a watch party, I think, but thanks uh, Arlene, thank you. 
Arlene uh, posted in here to help me. Um, okay, so let's go back to the questions. Huh, I am having one of those days, guys, and poor Connie, it's, like it's been the technical and, oh. Um, so you grew up uh, learning a few languages, you said. Did you learn those as a teenager? Well, when, when we were little, my parents um, were actively involved with Youth for Christ at the colleges yep. and uh, brought kids to um, church and to various activities that I shouldn't call them kids because they were obviously young adults, but it, uh, there also we had missionaries in our home, like all the time. Uh, and, and I would sit at my mom's feet, every, all the other kids outside playing, and everybody would be like, why aren't you out playing? <laughs> like, because I want to hear these absolutely incredible stories from all over the world. And, uh, you know, I just had a heart for missions even then. It's, my oldest sister did. She uh, was very ill and didn't get to go on the mission field, but that was her passion from the time she was four. Wow. So she led me to Christ. She was eight, I was five, my brother was six, and she did a flannel graph in the backyard for VBS in the summer and led a bunch of us to Jesus. That is amazing. My wow. brother became a pastor and he's now a missionary. Wow. And my little sister became, um, she's not little now, but she became a chaplain's assist, a chaplain and she has her PhD in counseling and, and various other things. And um, she, oh, I guess I should say she has her, her master's in counseling, her PhD is in chaplaincy so that she could pray for people in the emergencies because she's a first responder wow. and they would not let her pray for people. They said it was against the law unless you were a chaplain. Wow. Yeah, so my family's, all military and all uh, my brother was a chaplain assistant in the military first before he oh. went into pastoring and and um we're all mission-minded very very much but my mission is business entrepreneur in the entertainment industry that's what god has called me to and then to use our greater amount of our money to go out and do things in the community reach people for christ by showing his love in our, in the communities that's so. beautiful i love that all of you kids even coming from um that you mentioned that you came grew up in a christian home but you uh had abuse and violence your father yeah. was quite controlling and had a bad temper mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure and so you guys struggled through all that, that, that kind of experiences. And you had to stand up at one time, didn't you? Yeah, I was 14 and my dad said he was going to um, beat my brother from the house to the back fence and, and kill him. And, and it, 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 you know, he, I really hate to portray him this way because you know everybody has their journey yeah. and my dad and mom came from utter hell wow. really hell and and they became christians on they for a long time they were the only christians in their families wow. and and they raised us and my grandmother my mom's grand mom was angry my mom married my dad and that they became christians so there was so much you know so i just have to say if, if it wasn't God, I would have hated my dad. Wow. But God reached in to each and every one of us. And my brother, it took till he was a pastor for like 15 years before he had time with, his, with my dad and was able to forgive my dad. Wow. He wow. was in so much pain for all those years because he received really brutal treatment. So I love my parents. I love my dad. I, I mean, when we talked about their, at their 60th anniversary, these were not the things we thought of. We thought of, wow, we all love God because our parents loved us and told us about God. Wow. And dad loved us. He just loved us in a very broken, 
shell of a person. And when I was um, almost 30, my dad and I went to a Bible study that was called Boundaries when that book first came out. And we did it together and he sat down in the middle of this small group and started to cry. And he said, oh, where was this when I was raising my children? I had no idea, no idea. And if there, there was, there was pain in me up until that day. And that day took every bit of anything away because I realized completely how much my dad had no idea about how to parent good because he had no, no example ever of good parenting. That's beautiful forgiveness. Wow. What a journey. And then all you guys have come into missions. It's incredible, Connie. You know, yeah. that's not a small thing because I know people to this day who don't talk to their family members who shut them out. Like yeah. how much more God can use you through that. And then for you to, you know, grow up, you, you, you mentioned here that you were a virgin when you got married, which, so that was very valuable to you to honor yeah. and to honor God and to honor yourself. And that mustn't have been a usual thing even back then. Like, no, in fact, you guys, oh, I was offered drugs all the time. I was offered sex all the time. In high school, it was like, I was in Portland and, and, and it was wild then. And, and I was just like, uh, no thanks. So I really had very few friends and was very sheltered. And part of me is like, oh, I wish I hadn't been that sheltered. I would not have married who I married. But then I wouldn't have my daughter. Exactly. You can never get your head around that. <laughs> I know. I, I understand more than you know <laughs> without saying yeah. anything. I, you know, we judge, but we just don't. We don't understand God's plan. You know, yeah. so we look at, we look at your, I read this in your um, intro, but you were, you went through three abusive yes. marriages and I don't judge you in saying this because all of them were Christians. Wow. But after my first marriage, I, I got really angry and hurt at God. And I was like, I did everything right. Yeah. And look what you did. You did not protect me. And, and, but I did grow up a lot because of that marriage and became, like you said, an advocate for victims. And I was not going to be one, nor was I going to let my daughter be one when yeah. my first husband, we were divorced five years and he molested her. And I caught it the very first time. And um, it was on a visitation that she came back. And, and so in dealing with that, I have so many friends whose moms closed their eyes while their daughters were being abused. Oh. And my daughter one day saw someone being belittled and told to get over it online when they were talking during the Me Too movement. Someone was belittling someone and said, it's been years, you should get over it. And my daughter got on there and she goes, oh, oh, every day. I see that in my mind, what happened to me at seven years old. And I am, this was a few years ago. So she was like 35 at the time. And she just was like, you have no idea what it's like to live with that the rest of your life. And she goes, but let me tell you what I am, who I am. And then she started describing how I handled it, how I protected her, how I fought for her, how I... Uh, and I'm telling you, because I know what's going on around the world, yeah. it was only God, it was only God that I got all the help I got to defend my daughter and protect her. Because I had just before it happened, just before it happened, I had testified for the DA for a child that had come to me and told me three, or, three years prior, so, do you know what? That DA, I called him up when I found out this happened and I said, now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to help me. Wow. And he said, what do you want? Wow. I said, well, I'd like him to keep working so he can support and take care of her like he should. <laughs> I said, because if you put him in jail, yeah, it's not going to help her. She's not going to get all the help. And I, and I said, I want him to, to, to never... She will never go to court. 
he's gonna turn him he's already he turned himself in within 30 minutes because well Bonnie, yeah, okay. well, just, I want you to tell us because what's important okay. about Connie is yeah. there are people that have children that may be going through this yes are afraid right yes and so I feel like your story is very important your daughter's story our yes. is speaking on the behalf of others so if there's anyone on here that has someone in their family that they know are being abused yeah. this is this is something that connie represents like what an inspiration that she stood up and so tell tell us what you did <laughs> so i called him on the phone and i said you have 30 minutes um i said i will come and and you will not live and I said, and then, then our daughter won't have anyone. I said, so you better get to the police before I get to you. Wow. I said, They're already here. They're doing an interview with her. And I said, and I'm telling you, I will come for you. So he drove to the police station and turned himself in. Probably not the best way to handle it. But this is what he said last year when he called my daughter. He called her and he says, would you please call your mom and tell her she did everything right? Because he, instead of becoming an ongoing pedophile, he got treatment and he changed his life. He, wow. stayed, he stayed away from all people who had children by, even when he had people that said, oh, it's okay. And, but he, he is registered, but he, he said no. He's like, I don't want to ever do that. And, and just again, he was abused as a little boy by his grandfather. So you have to understand that I told my daughter that day, I said, we're going to forgive your dad. I said, because if we don't, we will have all that bitterness inside ourselves. And I said, but I am going to protect you and you will never be hurt again by him. Wow. And she wasn't. And, and um, so believing her was the first thing. Wow. And standing for her and refusing to take any, you know, but man, I hear women who try to do that and they lose their kids. They have them sent off to the abuser. And so I am not saying I did anything spectacular. I'm saying, I don't even know why God did what happened, but he put every, everything in place that, that made it possible for me to defend my daughter, wow. but for God, okay? Wow. And um, she's an amazing person, but we went through hell when she was a teenager. And it wasn't until she was about 25 that we started getting anywhere near close. And as she had her kids, she started calling me and saying, mom, when you were 27, that's when that happened. I can't even imagine how you handled it. Oh, mom. And so all this forgiveness started coming because she had so much hurt that some of it came my direction, right? And they had warned me. They said, your daughter will be angry at you. No matter what you do, she will be angry at you in her teen years. Yeah. And it was just a total prophecy and I don't think they were prophetic they just were experienced but uh the long story is that we have a great relationship she's still got some broken issues and uh, wow. she loves God wow. and I'm happy for that and she will so, thank you yeah because you cared about her but you also cared about her father in yeah. that um choice yeah it helped stop a cycle which is amazing like connie i know it's been a journey so thank you for sharing that because i know there's people who it's scary like even in my own journey i did not stand up even for myself or for someone else you know or someone didn't stand up for me it was all hush hush and secret and i feel that um, so many women and men women and men struggle with being abused and it's the secret yeah. cause shame. And that's something I respect about you, Connie, is you're like, oh no, 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 no. You were in the military too, right? Like I gotta deal with this and I'm gonna deal, like you want Connie on your team, you know? And if you need an advocate, like 
somebody was feeding chocolate to a dog today and she was right on it. And they were wondering who was giving their dog, you know, something to make the dog sick. And she saw somebody throw chocolate. So you, st you stepped in where a lot of people, and you inspired me to step in today to write a letter to someone to say, hey, I'm not feeling good about this, this situation. And confronting, like I think about Connie, she did this and, you know, it might not, all uh turn out all roses it's still you know you got to clean up messes but someone was saying the other day when we had a confrontation with truth uh, and maybe someone's truth was different than the other person so misunderstandings yeah um that it's better to tell what you're thinking uh and to have that person free to know even if you're upset at them than yeah. to harbor it what was the bible yes. it's better to Rebuke, what does that verse say? Better to rebuke someone openly than mm. to talk in secret. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, a, it's something like that verse. Maybe Arlene knows that verse or someone else on, but Peggy was on there too. Um, but yeah, it's very important to speak truth, but in love. But in that situation, yeah. you had to put, like someone I loved the other day wrote, I love your children more than I love you. So I'm standing up for this. Like right now, I'm, I'm advocating for your children. And I was proud of them for doing that because it turned the situation around. Totally turned it around. So we just pray for any situation that is like this, Connie. Yeah. I can tell you in that. And how many years you suffered through not only living, you know, when your dad was going through that stage of life and when you were growing up with that pain and abuse, but then marrying surprisingly and naively these were all guys that went to church and yeah. you know you, you i can see why my daughter's like i i don't want to go to church they're all like fake hypocrites and i can see why she would feel that way um yeah. from her life experience yeah. so and that happens to a lot of people and connie the fact that you are so strong and you've been through all that and you, you wrote in your um, bio that you went through, I wrote this down here, how has it been to walk through the pain and shame of all those years and enter into healing the brokenness? You know, were, were there times that you felt you couldn't get out of that space? Like, did it feel like- uh, Back when, in, in, the, from, in the second marriage, which I went into because I was a mess from the first one. Yeah. I rebelled, okay? Don't rebel against God, man. He's your, he's your, he's your advocate, he's your protector. Yeah. And, and, and there I was, I was mad at him because he let me get hurt. And um, so I ended up with someone who was extremely narcissistic and selfish and didn't work except during our entire marriage one year. The rest of the time he was too ill. So he leaves eight years or something he, li he leaves me and yeah and 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 moves in with another woman who stays home and takes care of him and the house and and runs a little daycare and wow yeah, it was it was like all my my friends who've met her and please okay i hope this, she never sees this so <laughs> they're like he left you for her and i'm just like uh <laughs> But you know, broken people do stupid stuff. And and that's just what God kept saying to me throughout my life. And when I I went through a thing called Genesis process in 2007. Yeah. And the Genesis process was a guy who went through the Jesus movement and became a Christian, but couldn't stop his heroin addiction or whatever it was. He was still addicted to drugs for 20 years. And so he went. And got a PhD in the brain and learned how, how the brain functions. And then he put together all the things that are going on and help people with the Genesis process. It helps you break off coping behaviors and addictions because it helps get to the root. It was just amazing. So I went through that with someone who became a lifetime mentor and, and dear friend and, um, so God helped me so much in that, that I 
I was, I, I, this is what you do. You go through this thing called the road to the wound. It's one of the processes. And as I got through this, it asks you, okay, so tell us all your major life events. And then, uh, you know, and tell us if it was somebody that affected you, that created that event. So, you know, of course my dad was in some of that. And when I brought it down, because you get down to the bottom, it says, so how do you feel? What do you think? This and that. And it was like, oh, like my dad was this broken little kid and never, you know, he was on his journey the whole time. He's just on his journey, just like I'm on mine. And it took, there, I already was healed so much because of what happened when we were going through the boundaries. But if there was any vestige of anything left, it seriously brought it to where I could say, I understand wow. who I am in my process. I can forgive me. Now I'm gonna tell you, Pedro Adeo, as he took us through, I was like, I'm, I'm really a different person. I'm very healed. I've, all these things you're talking about, I've already gone through them. I, in fact, when you cry and you talk about everything, I'm like, I, I feel fake because I'm so not crying through anything because there's been so much healing, right? And so then I'm like, people, people must think I'm totally shallow. But, <laughs> but it's not. It's just that I'm, I, I already was called bubbles as a kid because I was always happy, joyful. All my life, even as an adult, people would be like, wow, when you come in the room, you're bringing encouragement, you're doing this. It's like, okay, it's who he made me, right? And, and, and so then I'm like, okay, so you have a reason why you made me this way. I'll just be who I am. But it, Pedro, something he did made me take this little journey with Jesus one, one afternoon. And Jesus says to me, you do not think that my death was enough that you're truly covered with my righteousness. Wow. So you, all the things that are stopping you is you feeling imperfect and never good enough, no matter what you've accomplished. And I was like, holy cow. <laughs> and I just told God, okay. And I, and I recognized it. It hit so deep and it was just in a private moment with God, but it was something Pedro had asked some assignment he'd asked us to do that made me get there. And I was just like, Oh, and I said, Jesus, you're enough. You are. Oh, Oh, forgive me. And I totally repented. But I recognize that even having repented, the Lord is, is working in me now to say, to, to, to help me to change patterns of behavior that were affected because I thought those ways. And I don't want to pass that down to my grandchildren. And I certainly want to change that in my relationship with my kids. So I want them to feel so it doesn't matter that you're not perfect because you're perfect. Jesus died for you. So you're perfect enough. And I just am not going to judge you. And, I, and God's like, stop. A man, he's been telling me since that time when I was with my sister-in-law. If you're taking care of an ill person, they're not always grateful. And during that time, she came in one day and just started raging and she was going through some super high anxiety due to the medication. Wow. So I left, I didn't say anything, I left. And God took me on a little journey of saying, are you gonna hold on to a fence? And it took me three days to get over it. And nothing's been ever like that. I was just like in total horror that somebody would treat me like that, that I was giving my life to, right? Well, the next weekend, and I noticed it became a cycle, she did the same thing. Only that day, God had already worked on me, right? Yeah. And I just, I said to, to the enemy, 
I said, no, I'm just going to choose to forgive her. I'm going to choose to love her and pray a blessing into her. And I don't care. You can speak all this negative little crap about how I don't deserve this and all that. And I said, I just don't even care. I just am going to love her, which was not easy, okay? Because <laughs> it was really venomous. But, you know, <laughs> God, this is my brother's wife that passed away. I only have one brother, okay? And, 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 and my brother, he would talk to me and say, I, I, I know, I appreciate everything you're doing. But at the same time, that's his wife that he loves, and she's melting down because of her illness, right? Yeah. So you, you can't turn to your wife going through all this and, and say to her, no, don't talk to my sister that way, right? Because it would, so, so he was on this fine line, and I just had to come to, to just have grace for him because it did hurt because he knew the truth. But it didn't hurt as bad as it would because he found times to talk to me alone and, and speak to me of how much he appreciated me and, you know. And, you so, know, that happens to so many relationships, like yeah. just unmet expectations or, like, fear, our own, like, self-focused of, like, she's, she's major pain. Like, you know, she's, she's not going to live. So she did, she didn't know that, like in that struggle, I can't even imagine. So you had to have grace in that, which is hard to overcome. I know only with God, but for God, because seriously, yeah. there are so many situations where we're right, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, that right. this being right matter if we're all feeling this, like somehow we have to get beyond being right to walking in love. And that's, that's what I have to be reminded of, guys, often. And um, I'm not always proud of how I respond to a situation at the initial, <laughs> you know, happening. Yeah. And then I go back, I'm like, oh, like, that's just not who I want to be or who God wants me to be. So I appreciate you sharing that, Connie, because that, I believe that you've done that in your relationships with your ex-husbands. And one of them passed away, right? The, uh, uh, no, he uh, said he was dying and got my son to move to oh, that's what Oregon, and he's still alive. And oh, wow. My that's son what... was 23, and he's 35. And... Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So the, okay. what a journey. What a journey. Sorry, I, I read yeah. that wrong. Um, here I have this. This You mentioned that all along. Um, that God kept promising he was a Peter, not a Judas. My son, because my son during the time that he was there went through so much PTSD because he was a sheriff's deputy and he was actually more afraid of his fellow sheriffs because they were just like in the movies, absolutely good old boy, bad guys, you know. Um, it was very scary for him. There was only one guy who was honorable in his whole sheriff department. And uh, he didn't know when he was going to die. And he felt, and finally, after four years, they got out of there. And yet, when they came back, there was so much stress he'd gone through that, um, and he didn't get all the healing he needed. And so they ended up in divorce. They, but they didn't end up in divorce till they walked away from God. They decided they were going to become atheists because they just had so much brokenness from all of her mom and dad didn't want them to talk to me, so they came back. And my son said, we will not speak to you again. And it took me, I think it was like three years. So he was gone four years, and I got to talk to him. But just before they came back, they made that decision. And, and it was based on her family. They didn't want her to have, they didn't want him involved with us, with me. So... I didn't get to see my grandkids wow. until most of them very, very just minutes of their lives until, till my son divorced and he came back to Oregon. He, um, wow. he said, uh, he says, mom, I'm never going to let anyone ever 
keep me from a relationship with you again. But he's not walking with God. And I went to God and I was like, no, you're supposed to bring it back to you first. And the most beautiful thing God said to me, I know when he's coming back to me, you didn't. And it was hurting you. So I helped you. Wow. I brought him back to you. And man, my son um, helped write the series, the book series that we are producing as an audiobook. And it was actually his idea. And when he was in high school, I homeschooled him and we wrote the book in two years. And then it sat on a shelf for five years. And then this boy that I was tutoring, um, he had cerebral palsy and his grandmother was very wealthy and was able to get him a lot of medical help. So he was actually very, you could not really tell unless you spent a lot of time with him and understood that he even had cerebral palsy, but it affected how he learned. So I was given the honor by God to tutor him for three and a half years. And he went on to have an amazing life, but he was the reason we turned and became a publishing company because he was like talking to our artist that was his art teacher and said, why? Why aren't you helping Connie do the artwork for this book? Why aren't you doing this to just, you know, different people? So we ended up, it, although it, my son and, and Johnny, this young man, my son's name is Randy, we wrote the book series together. But Randy and I had it done, but Johnny knew there were no battle scenes in it. They were only alluded to. And he goes, why haven't you written these battle scenes? And I said, because I don't really know how to write battle scenes. However, I had tutored him through the Civil War, okay? So uh, when, when our, um, his fencing teacher became our, our choreographer and helped us to make these battle scenes, but he wrote them all as fencing. And so we had to go find some Christians who were sword fighters in Texas and they <laughs> They helped us use the correct terminology for using all these other swords and things. And yeah, it's been so much fun. But anyway, Johnny, uh, Johnny got all these other people that kind of were helping a little bit with things, but he got them to help big time. And, and our artist's dad it, it had been doing a Christian role-playing game for years that he had created. He came in to help us kind of go that direction. So, so while we're doing all this, we've got some of that building on the side. And yeah, he's, um, it, Johnny did so much for us. So he's definitely core, core, core in our lives. But then God brought in um, a few other people. And then we were, 2009, we were opening the company and, and God said, no, he says, um, I want you to take all these Christian people you know that could be your advisors or be this or that, and I want you to make them part of your company. And some of them are never going to do anything for you. They're going to do stuff just for the kingdom. Now, he had spoken that over us in 2004. He said, someday you will own a company where you will provide for Levites who will pray for you but they will get paid from you so that they can do everything they're supposed to do. And then, um, and that would be people that are doing, whether they're praying for us or they do some kind of work for us for 10 hours a week, but the rest of their time is to do ministry, but pay them huh. well enough that they don't have to work more than 10 hours. Yeah. So all this is coming to a head in how God is, is helping us to function as a business. And, and the funnel was so desperately needed. And um, so I know that's how we're gonna market, but everything is about how do we bless our communities and show Christ and love. So all, almost all the people involved are Christians, even in the 500 audio. But there are some that aren't. And God, that was when God said, I did not tell you to be in a bubble. 
How are you going to ever touch the lives of people who are not born again? How will you ever show them my love if you shut them out? And he said, you're going to have to trust me, even if some of it's an issue. Well, you know, my son is claiming to be an atheist. And, and now, <laughs> now our lead artist that was this dynamic, artistic Christian is, he got divorced and, and, and shut God out. Mm. So I'm, I'm watching my two boys. They were like sons to me. But God brought Johnny and God brought this other young boy, Jesse, that, that works and does all kinds of creation for the game. And, and now they're all in their 20s or 30s, right? And, and I don't know why it was mostly guys. There are a few girls. But it was mostly young men that God put in my path to speak into their lives, to give them healthy uh, female people that, that speak into their lives and, and inspire them and encourage them to be the kind of man God wants them to be, right? Isn't so that, isn't that poignant? Like, just think about the three men you married. Yeah. And now God is using you to speak into young, young men, men to be that kind of man that would make yeah. a woman be honored and loved. That's beautiful, Connie. That's and beautiful. to speak healing, yeah. you know, because a lot of these young men all of the young men actually were broken mm. all of them so to be able to to just keep pouring into even even lion my artist you know he's kind of taken a sabbatical and now you know i know he wants to come back on one level but i bother him because of my faith so he's kind of not ready to come back yet so I'm just like, you know, God, you know, just when he's coming back, just like you do my son. Yeah. My son, however, is happy to work with me right now. So, yeah. That's good. I just lift up your children, Connie, right thank now. You. Children of my heart, too, please. Yeah, and the children of your heart. God, we thank you for Connie's children. And we thank you for their children, her children's children, her grandchildren. And we thank you for her heart children. And God, I thank you for what you're using, Connie, to speak your love and truth and to walk it out, being there with her daughter, being there for her son, God, in whatever way that looks like. Help her, God, to be creative as a mama, as a grandma, and to know how to walk in honor, but still speak the truth and yes. still walk with the little ones and to show them who you are. God, just bless her in that. Thank you for her healing and coming through so much. God, I just thank you for her heart. And I know that your heart is to impact others with the kingdom message of truth and love from God. So how does, what is the name of your series? And how do your series correlate in this kingdom? Okay. Um, so, so originally we called it the, the Ren prophecies, but the, um, the companies out there that market you were thinking that we were some kind of a, I really have my air blowing all over, sorry ladies. Um, they were thinking we were some kind of prophetic religious book. So then we actually discovered there was a book series called The Wren Prophecies, even though we had originally checked, but it's about Native American that were called Wren. So it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with us, but, and it wasn't who we are, but at that time was when we were just about to go actually publish our book. So we, oh, and, and we were going to go through Bain books, but the founder died the year that we were ready. And so God said, I want you to open your own publishing company in 2008. And I was like, um, everybody's closing those books are, you know, becoming digital, that, that's stupid. And God's like, I prepared you for this. All the things you've done with your silk screening business and this and this and this and this, he goes, I prepared you for this and you're going to do it. And I'm going to tell you how to, how to set up your company, how it will be, you live on 10% and, and give 90% away. And, and I was like, uh, okay. And he, and he goes, um, 
it will be a kingdom business and it will be mine and I'm the CEO, not you. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, just tell me how to set it up. Wow. So. Wow, Connie. And w were you going to share a piece of that? Uh oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so Caddo is the name of the book because we changed everything. Caddo is French for gift. And that's what the humans that left Earth go to this planet and they call it Caddo because it's a fresh start. It's a gift. But they don't realize that there are indigenous species that are intelligent because there's no buildings. There's no, there's no anything that they can tell because the species, the Sigorin are the top, they're all equally intelligent, but they're the, you, what you would call the, like humans are here, right? Um, but there are other intelligent species that speak and have cultures and everything. But the Sigorins do not destroy their trees to live in them. They come together as a community. They take the living trees, four of them, and use telekinetic power, it's a sci-fi, telekinetic power to form the trees into a house that the, uh, the rooms are pushed out and the, and the floor becomes flat and, and then out of the floor comes, you know, couches, tables, all this and even bathtubs and the whole system is done because they are, there's, they have people just like us, plumbers, all the different things that know what they're doing and it's their specialty and they work on that part of the creation. And so they, they form the trees into homes, into businesses and all that, but the tree stays alive and still has its top and everything. So the humans just thought that it was creatures and trees. And then we come and we do what we do. We cut the trees and they're freaking out. And then there's a linked land, another world in another dimension, but in the same space where this creature that's behind me, that is a six winged creature with a torso and a head and legs and arms, right? They only speak in music. Hmm. They play music to each other. They, they, when they speak, they're, they're, the sound is musical notes, but they understand each other, but they are telepaths. This is how good God was, because they all, all those species believe in God, the one true God. So this species on, in its dimension has a tree that produces a fruit that lets them reproduce, but the tree also links their two worlds and some trees of their trees grow up in our world as it are in Caddo. Hmm. So the humans come and they don't like this tree at all. It's a little black gnarly tree, doesn't seem to have any value, doesn't have any fruit in this world. And every so many years, one piece of fruit will show up and nobody, you know. So, but what happens is the humans, there's a few, they grab a piece of that fruit and take one bite before it dies. Cause it's as soon as they pull it off, it starts to die wow. and they take a bite and it gives them the telepathy. It gives them, it opens up more though, because all those species only have their one individual telekinetics, empaths, um, teleportation, different things like that. These different species. One species can understand all the languages of the other species. They will be introduced in book two. And so in, in book one, they meet, the, the humans meet, you're seeing it a thousand years down the road. And, and so they, this species had to come and join minds with us in order to get us to stop destroying the trees that die in their world and then they can't have babies and reproduce as a society. So, okay, so the, that's the sci-fi part, but it also, it also pulls God in. But in the end, there's a lot more to it. We have, in the first book, you meet Duke de la Fier, and he, he's, he's, uh, his name is Paul Arison from the family line of Arisons that owns the... Um, cruise ships and they're Hebrew 
and the the daughter went back when um when uh that when they became a new nation and the son stayed in the u.s and built this took over from his dad and built it even bigger this shipping this cruise so we chose them and i didn't even know what god was going to do but we were looking at who in the world could afford to send ships into space billionaires right uh so anyway we, we 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 chose certain family names and we found people that we found to have fairly decent reputations of morality that would be the leaders for the most part and um so anyway it, it just leads to the end of the fear duchy when the Sephorans have been treated so badly i can't tell you everything because it would ruin it but they do they, they, they have a region that he saved for them, which cut most of his own personal part of his duchy, which he has a province in, like the size of a state, right? Wow. Half of it went to the Sigorans. And then one of his dear friends, that's one of his marquees that has another state, give to the Wren, which are not from that world. So that's part of a, the secrets that will be unveiled in, as you read the story. It sounds fascinating. <laughs> so, so what this is saying is, I hope, a good message of everyone deserves land. And, and here's a Jewish descendant that says, I will make sure they have land that no one attacks. I will make sure that these people who were at war with us for 30 years we are going to, not the Sigorin, the Rin, we will give them land because, because we know they, we all didn't understand each other and now we're going to have a treaty and they need somewhere where nobody can attack them. And he gives them this other piece of land in, in one, of one of his marquees agrees to do so. And um, so it, it's, it's a lot of my feelings went into this part of the book that we are going to share how do we everybody that goes to the planet is a landholder and the only way they lose their land is by treason and the only thing that is treason is to by force try to take someone else's land so if you do that you become a traitor and you go to trader island and all your family lose their heritage but they move to the king's land, which is lush and beautiful. Only you go to Trader Island. Anybody that wasn't at fault that's in your family gets to go and stay on the king's land in normal houses. You, they have to take care of their own piece of land again, but it belongs to the king. So they are living off the grace of the king. Mm -hmm. So many things, all of it was Holy Spirit. We prayed, 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 because back then my son prayed like crazy. He was so in love with God back then. So um, I can just tell you this. I believe that there's a message through our book. I believe there's a message through our business. And um, we are so not perfect people and we don't even try to pretend we are. Um, so God has put me here with my granddaughter and it's been, she's four and she's very wild and very, uh, naughty doesn't even come close to describe the stuff she's been doing. And at four years old, it's kind of scary. And, and I let fear get to me when I was first here, seeing what she was doing, fear for her future, but fear for the things that she was doing to others. And God said, no. He says, you cannot be offended and cannot be allow the fear to get inside about her future. You have to take hold of all those thoughts and all those feelings, and you have to walk over to her in the midst of her meltdown, tantrum, freak out, bad behavior, whatever bad thing she's doing to the dog or anybody else, right? Is she did not poison the dog she's not here she she wouldn't go that far but she is mean to the dog like really me so i walk over to her now and i lay hands on her 
and I speak over her and I bless her. And I say, God, whatever wound is going on, and she calms right down. Now, she hasn't had breakthrough yet because she goes back to it. But I'm believing God that he put me here for such a time as this. And I'm like, okay, God, every time you ask me, will you wait for your success? Will you wait? There's something more. Not only am I blessing my granddaughter, but I am learning something. I'm learning how to be an even better leader. I mean, you know, you think you've arrived till you see yourself in a moment where you're frustrated with a four-year-old, right? <laughs> how about a one-year-old? <laughs> so they're just bigger when they're four, okay? And they're acting that way. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, yeah, God's really, and then, and then my son's kids being raised outside with no God, just totally, totally with no God by her or him. And, and they came and got to know me. And the very first day they met me, they were like, you're our grandma. And, and the love I've received from them and the love I've been able to pour out to them. But what really got me was when they started asking me about God. And their dad was like, well, you can answer because they're asking. I'm not going to stop them from asking. I just am not going to teach them because I don't believe in it. And they know what I believe. So they started asking and three of them came to me and said, we want a Bible. And dad says, you can buy us one. Wow. So I got them a Bible and an activity kind of book to help them like explore it. Funny, that's I don't, and, and then COVID hit. And I don't even know because the, there's no communication no seeing. And then you were called to your daughters and to, and then you yeah. were able to lead your grandson there. Yeah. To know Jesus. To know Jesus. He gave his life to Christ, uh, accepted and believes that the Holy Spirit's in him and knows that it's not a junior Holy Spirit. And if he prays, it's good. And, and he can pray and believe for healing. And um, so wow. we're just, we're just walking through a lot together with all of that. Amen. But wow, what a what an honor as a grandma. It's like, wow, like, you know, I get to do that with my nephew, you know. And what an honor to be able to shift a life with God's love and care and yeah. speak the intimacy of Jesus to a child. Yeah. And they then they understand it's it's incredible. Like we sing, um, I do Zoom with my church back home and I put on Christian music all the time. So my, my grandson and I, uh, he, he loves to learn songs. And my granddaughter, she now goes around the house singing, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And she'll sing, um, there's power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain and I'm just like she doesn't even know what she's speaking yeah. but God does and and she's speaking it and she's singing it and she's worshiping and I and she does pray to Jesus she does know because my daughter you know has taught them about Jesus so so I I get resistance from my daughter a little on that end um but I am really confident that God brought me here so that there will be breakthrough even there. So, Amen. And you now you know, play that song, uh, raise all the whenever she's getting up to the dog, like, or break every chain, just start yep. breaking that tune. You probably do that already. <laughs> well, Connie, yep. I went over, guys, because we had, sorry, a, we had a really rough, no, don't apologize. We had a rough start with technology. It was just really interesting tonight. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we walked through what we could and give you, you know, valuable time because it was about 15 minutes in before we could get started and we started on the wrong channel. I don't know where it's off in the abyss of Facebook. I'll find it later. We'll have half a, half a piece over there somewhere, but Connie, thank you for coming on tonight. And, um, yeah. I'm going to bring on, I think Christine's the only one on, uh, um, 
on the Zoom right now, and I don't know who's on Facebook, um, but you guys are welcome to come on. Hi, Christine. I put the Zoom link in here so you guys can uh, come on. It was hard for me to find everything. I think because I was posting from the page rather than the from me. But then when I tried to go live from me, it didn't work. I had to go from the page, but then when I share, it has to be from me. It's like, <laughs> I will get it figured out. And I never had that complication the other week. So, you know, Christine said, what a great story. She was saying a few comments. You, you probably saw them in Zoom here, eh? And then someone said yeah. on, um, on Facebook, the cycle of abuse, generational, you know, and then um, that was Arlene. And then Lori said, way to go, Connie. So glad to hear that you were able to make your ex want to change. And so glad your daughter still follows Jesus. I've seen others turn away when life gets tough. Yeah. And, uh, Arlene said the verse, if you rebuke a righteous man, he will thank you. It's amazing. That was a verse in the Bible. But I know there's one like open rebuke is better than the silence of like open rebuke to a friend is better than to talk about them. So, but yeah. let's, let, you know, let's uh, pray. However you feel comfortable, if you want to pray generally or specifically, whatever God leads. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just, we thank you that you know our end as much as our beginning. And that in all of that, your plans are good and that you don't know, oh, you have been really saying this to me. You don't know anything but triumph. So we are walking in triumph, even if we haven't seen it all come through yet. And thank you for giving us hearts to seek you and um, chance after chance, no matter what goes on in our lives, that you're still there with us. You're walking. You're, you're coming after the one. And Lord, I really feel, feel like my whole you held me to to know that you were there with me every step, even in the darkness, even when I was mad at you. Thank you, God. And thank you that that was a much shorter period than it could have been, but it was only by your grace. Um, Lord, I pray for other people who go through this. As, as uh, Stacy was saying, so many people go through this, like my parents, and although they might find you, they are broken and, and don't know what to do to have a healthy home life. I didn't even have a healthy home life for my children because of, because of what happened. So I just pray, God, we so look forward to the day of your return. But in the meantime, your heart is that none will perish. So we pray we pray not only for the victims, but we pray for the predators. We pray for them to come to know you, to be freed from their addictions and their uh, abuse that they do. That we want them to find and be restored to you because you say you want none to perish. So we pray for that. We pray for freedom from the horror and shame that they're feeling that drives them even deeper. And we pray for the breaking off of chains, whether it be a person who was a victim and has chains to other addictions or a person who was a victim and became a victimizer. We pray for the chains to break off. And we pray for healing. And we pray for restoration. Lord, I know it is not the best thing for restoration in every family because of, of the, the destruction. But we know that restoration to you will bring them into salvation. And there can be restoration in heaven in a way that could never happen here on earth. So we pray for that. I pray a blessing, blessing of your presence to reside in the hearts and lives of the victims of the only enemy we all have. We are all victims of, of <laughs> the demonic realm and Satan and, and his, his game. 
and we know he's lost it. And we have victory in you, but it's sometimes so hard to see that victory without it being manifesting. So we pray for people who are at this time feeling the hope deferred. And we pray and we know that you are trying to give them something that will pull them out of that feeling that hope has been deferred too long. Something that will hold them until the healing takes place until that moment where, where they get that breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Lord, I pray for everybody and the illnesses, the physical illnesses that their bodies take on because they suffer from the years of other traumas that were emotional and physical and mental. We, we pray for the physical stuff that manifests in illness. We pray to break that off. We pray that you are their healer. And whether it be cancer or stomach illnesses, digestive, uh, any, any form of illness that attacks them is not of you. So we pray for your atmosphere of heaven to bring wholeness and healing and that they will know that it came from you. We pray Every kind of blessing, restoration of finances, restoration of families where it can happen, restoration of the physical that has been done, and restoration of the mental and emotional, healing of that, Lord, healing so that they can pass on that healing to others. We pray that for you to be glorified in all of this. For in each and every circumstance for you to come in and speak your truth so that the person that has felt abandoned and abused and an orphan will no longer feel that way. Amen. And I praise you in advance for the healing wave that is coming because of COVID. While everybody is talking about the children that are being abused because, abused because their home and they're with abusers more. I speak that you have a plan that is greater, that is going to bring restoration and healing across our lands. Not just America, not just Mexico, not just Canada, but around the world. There is going to be an awakening in the body. There is an awakening. We are being shook to our foundations and, and, and made straight, and made to walk straight and made to hear your voice in a way we never heard it. So God, I pray that all of us, all of us will fill our oil lamp full of your Holy Spirit so that we can hear your voice and be prepared for whatever it is you call us to do, to be poured out and to be refilled by your spirit again and again and again as we do the work you've called us to do. Whether it be as a missionary, a pastor, a business person, or an employee, whatever it is, Lord, whatever it is, where you place us, let us glorify you and reach out to the lost and dark and wounded. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I felt like my spirit was getting rest, so I kept yawning because my I was so stressed this week so i feel like god you know every time i do an interview at the end i feel like oh god lifted my spirit <laughs> because it's like Yay. sometimes i'm just so physically tired so thank you yeah i just kept yawning because i was releasing uh that weightiness of what um has come through you know the last two weeks and so yeah thank you thank you for that prayer i just received that and i i want to see god release you know his glory and transformation in us and you know yeah. there's, a, there's a time last week that i felt like it just shook me because it was like i just i want to stop and just what, what did i just go through all this for you know and it was such a lie but it hit me because there was so much grief involved and i know that we're all going through this time of going God, yeah. what do you have for us you know and so you sharing your story with the struggles that are going on there. It's like, can you imagine three young kids, eight, six, and four, <laughs> the grandma, like 
those struggles are very real and yet being creative you know and now you're helping your grandson do his own book you know just like you did your son yeah for your daughter's son how very exciting is that to pass on creativity yeah. i'm gonna bless you connie with what god's doing through this and she is going to be doing a challenge she's been working on it with her funnel and everything a funnel is uh, the ads that go out that show online that you can see about the event and then it's like it brings you through for your contacts and email and but she has uh she's going to bring together for young men learning how to do voiceover and do their stories and stuff like that so if you're interested in that for um any young men right actually for everybody we just changed it opened it to everybody okay, yeah so bring it up to anyone interested in doing voiceover, learning about being creative and doing something that God's put within you, um, just let us know. And uh, that's something Connie's working on. So yeah, Christian says that sounds Thank good. you. So thank you, Connie. I love you. Love you too. Tonight. And I pray that we both get good rest. You're having some time off. I well a little bit they come back tomorrow oh wow so we better let you have your night tonight but god bless you and wow i'm amazed at the overcoming that god has done in your life and bless you christine that was on zoom thank you christine yeah and god bless you naomi i see you on there and whoever else is on still and that will come on later or on earlier just bless you lots of love guys have a good night have a good night that's it.